Revenue Chat Episode 109. The Dream Business Community wants to help you with your career and business. Are you ready for accelerated success? Check it out. The Dream Business Community at Tony, D-U-R-S-O dot com slash community. Get the Revenue Chat mobile app for your Android or iPhone. It's free. Download from your cell phone or smart device at Tony, D-U-R-S-O dot com slash mobile. This is Revenue Chat Radio with your host, Tony D'Urso, interviewing successful entrepreneurs and giving you actionable advice and insights. Let's rev it up. Hello again and welcome to this episode of Revenue Chat. I'm your host, Tony D'Urso. In our last episode, 108, Brian McMahon gives such a stimulating talk about how to really build a good business from the ground up. He's chock full of advice. Whether you have your own business or not, you're going to love this honest, down-to-earth, great advice from a master entrepreneur. This is awesome. Check it out. And on this episode, we have... Brian E. Neal. Born and raised in Chicago, Brian grew up watching Will Smith in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which was the source of inspiration. While very active in sports all the way through college, he got into acting and has been doing print, runway, film, TV, and voiceover work ever since. Brian tells us how to make it in the entertainment business. His website is brianeneal.com. That's N-E-A-L. All right, Revenue Crew, let's rev it up. Get ready for Brian to tell us how to make it in the entertainment business. Here we go. Hello, Brian. How are you? I'm doing good, Tony. How are you? Hey, I'm good. You know, I always love interviewing a fellow Chicagoan, so this is an extra pleasure for me. And I just want to say I'm very grateful to have you on the show. I know you're out there doing this and doing that all over. So thanks for taking the time to hang out with us on Revenue Chat. Oh, anytime. Thank you for having me. Well, great. Now, Brian, I mentioned a little bit about you in the intro, and perhaps... You'd like to fill us in a little bit on your roots and how you became an expert in your field. Brian, how did it all start for you? Well, I started off modeling first. It actually is a funny story. Uh, I was on a plane trip back from um, Daytona Beach, and a random woman on the plane suggested that I get into modeling. And it made me think. And when I got back home, I just looked into it. And a week later, I was doing my first runway show. And I just kept getting jobs, getting jobs. Then I switched over from modeling into acting, did background work on a few of the TV shows um, in Chicago, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Betrayal. And then I did my first feature film, which was Divergent, which got to meet um, Shailene Woodley and a lot of the stars on the movie set. And I knew then that this is what I wanted to do. And I've just been pursuing it ever since. That is so cool. That's very fast from idea to action to implementing. That's very cool. Very impressive. And I can't wait to find out more about that. So let's just jump into this and let's talk about making it in entertainment. Now, you have told me how you've got started and it's not like you had it as a lifelong dream. You never really wanted to be an entertainer before you had that idea? Well, I wouldn't say that. As a kid, I uh, was always into sports football, basketball, and then I did choir. So I guess I was always a performer um, or entertainer of some sort because I like being watched when I was doing my activities. I used to actually mimic Will Smith on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air in front of the TV like I was in an episode with him. So I guess in the back of my mind, this was something that I really wanted to do. That's why when I actually started to pursue it, it just clicked and it worked and it's been working ever since. That is absolutely amazing. And you've done so many projects. Uh, you've done a minimum of 29 
gigs, as you call it. Is that the right word? You guys call it gigs or gigs, projects, projects. Um, okay. Yeah. And you've done a number of movies like Divergent and so forth, which I think is very cool. And I really love that movie. So it's very, very cool. And what are some other projects that uh, you're planning to work on? Can you reveal anything? Oh, yes, I can. I actually just got back from Atlanta. I just worked on Black Panther with Chadwick and Lupita's in it as well. And I worked on a film called I, Tanya with Margot Robbie and Sebastian Stan. In a few weeks, I will be heading back down to Atlanta to hang out with the Bellas on Pitch Perfect 3. That is very cool. You know, I can see you as an action superhero, and I don't necessarily know what your role is in Black Panther, which I love, by the way, by, as an aside, I grew up reading Marvel comics as a kid. So I just absolutely love the Marvel superheroes. I can really see that. Do you see some future in that coming up for you with the Marvel and uh, these other great superheroes that are coming out? I really hope so. I actually just talked with a stunt coordinator in Chicago who is going to actually get me to start working more on stunts since I have a background in gymnastics and tumbling. That way I can start integrating more into the action sequences for the specific films. Very cool. Very cool, Brian. As we've told our revenue crew that we're going to talk about how to make it an entertainment, let's uh, take some time here and really give some uh, good advice, tips, insights, and takeaways on how can somebody get into entertainment? Because, you know, we all think it's tough and there's you're starving and you're usually a waiter trying or a waitress waiting for a break. So can you give us uh, a rundown of pointers and what we can do, please? Oh, yes, I can, Tony. This industry is very difficult. It's not easy, and anybody will be able to tell you that. It's not easy for anyone. This is a industry where you have to have tough skin. I hear a lot of no's, more no's than I actually hear, you know, yes. So this is a, a great industry for tough skin. You have to be acceptance of being critiqued all the time. You're going to be critiqued by everybody. Now, everyone's going to like you. And you have to be okay with that. So as long as you have tough skin, you will make it. As long as you keep pursuing your dreams or what you want to do, don't listen to the no's. Like I said, you're going to hear them a lot. So just brush them off and then improve. Turn those no's to yes. Make that person who said no second guess themselves and wonder why they didn't bring you in when they should have. Oh, I like that. That's a smart way. Turn the tables. But, you know, I'm really interested. You know, I've heard of this for years and years. Of course, we all have. Get a tough skin. Get a tough skin. Well, how do you do that? How do people deal with the nose? Because, you know, there's a lot of people and unfortunately, too many entrepreneurs fail. Too many businesses fail. And they don't have this tough skin. They get, Of course, they get a lot of nose and they agree with it. So how do we get that, please? Well, that's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different methods is what's comfortable with you. I wouldn't say I, I didn't, you know, get used to it until after being a year in. I was surprised when I got my first no. I was shocked. I'm like, really? What did I, you know, do wrong? I'm not understanding. That person's, you know, crazy. But when you actually look at it and you're like, OK, these are some flaws that I can see in myself. That way, if you already know what they are, when somebody tells you it don't hurt that much. Or it's not that big of a deal because you're like, okay, I know that's not my strong suit. I know that's something I need improvement on. I will continue to work on improving that. So as each audition or each project gig that you work on, like I said, somebody's not going to like what you do. So as you keep doing more and doing more, you work on the other things. I always say never let a mistake be the same thing twice. So if you got one mistake one time, the next time you make a mistake, it better not be the same thing you did the first mistake for. That means you didn't learn. So you have to build upon yourself as you keep progressing and going. And even the A-listers now, I guarantee they still study. They're still in classes. They're probably teaching classes just so they can stay informed on updated things because the world's changing every day. We're very technologically advanced now. And I know a lot of the actors started when it wasn't really that case. So it's always much, much needed improvement all the time. That's very interesting, Brian. And you know, I happen to know a couple of stars. I know a particular well-known star. And it was something like about 
maybe 10 years, I mean, this person is very well known or very famous, very big, at least I think so. And about 10 years after this person's been doing very well, I hear that this person is taking uh, voice lessons. And I'm like, what? After all this time? And then I realized you have to keep improving yourself. You have to keep at it, I guess, because as you say, the industry does change. The world does move on, I guess, for lack of a better way to say it. Yes, yes. And it's just always practice. Like, practice makes perfect. That's a long, a long philosophy that still goes on and will continue to go on because it's true. As long as you keep practicing, you can get better and better. So true. So true. Totally, totally dig that. Do you have any strategy at all that on how to take a no and make the person who says no maybe second guess themselves and give you another chance? Any, any insight on that? Actually, yes. Since we have the World Wide Web, you can actually look up, you know, everyone basically now. So if the specific person that told you no, if you're able to find them online and then see clients that they have worked with or even famous actors they have worked with, then you can actually relate to them by looking at the other people that they work with. And then you will better understand kind of why you weren't either right for that role or they noticed something different and not to say that you want to imitate fully that other person. But if you can see, like if I did a role and they said I wasn't right, but the person who did the casting cast like Will Smith in a role and I can say, okay, normally Will Smith's character is kind of serious or he's really goofy. I wasn't either of those. So maybe that was my mistake. So now if I get a chance to get in front of the person again and it's for a similar role, maybe I might try a little goofy or a little more serious just to see if one of those two takes uh, make them change their mind, which they do a lot. I see. Very cool. And it's very clever that you do a little homework on these people, casting directors, producers and whatnot before you audition and meet with them so that you know their background. So that's a smart thing. And doing the homework is, I think, very important in that industry. Oh, doing the homework is very important. I've learned so much just by looking at pictures or even reading profiles. I mean, these casting directors, producers, directors, they're just like us. They're everyday people. They have their likes. They have their dislikes. They just you know, cast for major films and work with big time actors, little time actors is just getting to know them because they're kind of like a target. So they don't want to feel targeted just like no one wants to feel targeted. We all want to be humans and that's what we are. So if you can go in and talk to them just like a normal person would talk to them, they actually really appreciate that. The actors do as well. They don't like being run up to, oh my God, oh my God, and you know, can I take a picture? You know, they want, hey, how you doing? A nice conversation actually turns a lot better than just being that fanboy or fangirl. That's very interesting. Very good point. Very good point. And I want to go back to how you started. I realized in the course of this conversation that it was a very smart, even though maybe you didn't plan it that way, but that lady that gave you that insightful advice, it fits. You became a model first. You got into a part of the business, though it's not really the business, but you kind of got into that being popular, being photographed, hobnobbing with that type of people. And that I can see was a successful segue into acting. Plus also you can do both. You can do acting and you can do modeling. So it seems like that that would be a very good piece of advice for anyone that wants to break it into film is to start first in modeling and pictures. Well, that is actually correct because most of the entertainment industry wants to see what you look like. So if you're already comfortable being in front of the camera and actually too, you need headshots and photographs of yourself before they would even really talk to you. So you have to get in front of a camera first kind of anyway, whether it's a cell phone selfie or you paid a professional photographer to get professional shots, you're going to eventually have to do one of the two eventually. So actually getting started with photography in a sense or being photographed is a great way to start off, not necessarily for a modeling career per se, but I mean, if it leads to that, go for it. 
but that is a good starter to get a foot in the door because most of the photographers work with actors anyway. And this is a big networking industry. That's very important in the entertainment industry is networking because you never know who knows who. I got you. The Dream Business community wants to help you with your career and business. As you know, jobs can be fickle. Here today, gone tomorrow. And owning a business has its own frailties. Bloomberg says 8 out of 10 entrepreneurs fail in the first 18 months. A Harvard study says 3 out of every 4 venture-backed firms fail. And there's other sources with shocking figures of their own, which all point to one very conclusive point. These are scary times we live in. Let's help you in the dream business community. Yes, you. Let's try to give you the information you need now to boost your career or business. And I'll be there every step of the way, helping you along with other experts in many industries. Are you ready for accelerated success? Check it out. The dream business community at TonyDurso.com slash community. That's TonyDurso.com slash community. Do you like the awesome interviews on Revenue Chat? Please help others discover these interviews on iTunes by giving a kind review if you like them. Go to TonyDurso.com slash iTunes and give a few sentences about what you liked. Let me know and I'll send you something to show my appreciation. That's TonyDurso.com slash iTunes. And thanks so much. And we're back with Brian E. Neal talking about how to make it in the entertainment business. Now, we all seem to think, or maybe the media has put it in our minds, that it's tough to get an acting job. Well, you've proved that it's not. Is it relatively easy to get a modeling job? No. Modeling is probably harder than acting. Oh, my. Um, An acting job, I mean, you could sit around and try to wait for something to come. You might get one thing per year. You sit and wait. I don't wait. I go out and find them. If nothing's here, I'm willing to travel. I will leave just to go find a job, find work, because that's what I want to do. That's what I like doing. So I don't want to just sit around and just wait for, you know, an agent to call me or for something to pop up in my email. I'm going to go find my work. And now with, you know, YouTube being big and Vine coming around and stuff, kids and adults have started making their own work which is being noticed too by casting directors and producers and film professionals. So to sit around and wait around is not the thing to do. It's to get out there and to go get it. Okay. That makes good sense. Now I I'm going to assume I've never been into modeling, but I would assume that in every particular city or town, there's got to be some business there that takes care and looks for models for advertising and commercials and so forth. So do you just walk in and just get with some headshots and just uh, fill out applications? How do you start on that? It's not necessarily a cattle call, but most of the agencies do have open calls. And a lot of the things are online now, too. So if you can't make it into an open call, they'll let you submit via email online. But they're very, very specific. It's very, very hard. So that's what I mean. Like, it's harder than acting because acting, you know, they want to see your face. They want to see your appearance. Modeling is mostly how you look overall. So you got specific modeling, of course, hand modeling, foot modeling. You got fitness modeling, runway, print. Like, it's a lot of different aspects that these guys are looking for. So once you go to an audition or even an open car, you're going to walk in a room with about 30 or 40 other people who look just like you or something similar to your look, which that's where the difficult thing comes in. Because now it's just not, you know, you and maybe three or four other people like it might be in the acting world. In modeling, they come in 20, 30 plus people just so they have the idea. Oh, I see. Very interesting. Okay. Well, that's good that you can apply a little bit online. But it seems to me that if there's a local office, I mean, I'm not the expert. It's just how it seems. Not only apply online, but go hit all your local venues and uh, just 
Just keep hobnobbing. And as you say, meet with people and actually have real conversations and don't just say, hey, oh, I know you can have a photo. (laughs) Right, right. True. And especially some people don't look like their pictures or some people just aren't good picture takers. So with them seeing you in person will actually work out better in the end anyway, because most of the things are lifestyle and real people. So they don't want to see that you could take a picture and add 30,000 filters on it to make yourself look good. They actually want a person who actually looks good already to you. So it's not much work they have to do at the end. Makes good sense. Now, Brian, I always like to get to know a little bit more about our guests. And this being this entertainment business is very unique. You are an entrepreneur. You're very successful. You've made it. You've made it very nicely at your age. And it's a little bit different. But what I'd like to know more, I'd like to get to know you a little bit more. And perhaps maybe there's uh, some success or story you'd like to share with us. You know, being on the film, being on the set, being in a photo shoot. Maybe you could share something with us. I wouldn't. Well, I still have a long way to go in my eyes, but I have made much progress. Um, I'll be approaching four years in March. So within four years, I have done quite a bit, um, a lot of work, which I'm very proud of. And as far as like working on things, um, I actually I did I did a shoot uh, last summer for Marcus Theaters. The shoot was very last minute and I had to drive four hours to get to it. I was, you know, kind of irritated a little bit, but I made it to the shoot. I was there early. They had to set up and everything. I had to wait (laughs) and I had to wait and I had to wait because I was the last person there that they were going to use for the day. And I did my shoot. It was fine. I had to drive my four hours back home. And then I get calls and emails about a month later, like, dude, you're like everywhere. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, I just passed your billboard on the expressway. I'm like, my billboard? I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> and they sent me a picture, and it's this billboard from the shoot that I did at Marcus Theaters um, that I had to drive four hours for. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm on a billboard. Hold on. This is crazy. So I drive to where the billboard is because <laughs> I want to see it for myself. And it's a big cardboard billboard of me sitting in one of the uh, movie theater recliners for advertising for the new theater that they were going to open up. So I'm amazed and just like, you know, in all like this shoot that I was so mad about (laughs) just actually gave me probably the best advertising like ever. And when the theater opened, not only did they keep the billboard, but they actually put me on flyers for the theater and i was on posters that they showed like throughout the theater and that was like amazing like a a shoot that was so tiny so small and not necessarily insignificant but it did irritate me (laughs) um a little bit just with how everything went with it turned out to be one of the best things i think i've ever done Wow, what an interesting story, Brian. Thanks for sharing. It's just amazing how something, let's call it simple, not driving for eight hours is not simple, but it's just a photo shoot can become such a big career moment like that to catapult you further. Very cool. Very cool. Is it true that a majority of new businesses fail? Check this out. In order to have a successful growing business, there are some vital points that you must know. You must have worked them out thoroughly. They must be synchronized with each other and all employees, consultants, and companies that you depend on must know these items and be in agreement with them if your new business is to meet with a high percentage of success. Get it free. The Vision Map. Beat the odds for business success at Tony. D-U-R-S-O dot com slash vision. Learn how to establish your vision, purpose, long-term objective, and master plan, including strategic and tactical planning. Get the vision map. Beat the odds for business success at Tony, D-U-R-S-O dot com slash vision. V-I-S-I-O-N. Let's talk about purpose. I'd like to know what motivates and drives you, please. I mean, for what you've accomplished in four years, 
I am impressed. So what keeps you going? I actually motivate myself. I'm very big on people, I guess, not necessarily not believing in me. But I love when people tell me I can't do something because that just motivates me way more to actually do it, to show myself that I can more than to prove them wrong, even though proving them wrong is a little bit in there. But it's just to show that I can do it. Once you tell me, hey, you're not right for this or you shouldn't be able to do this, you can't do this. That's going to make me really try more. And that's what I heard when I first started. They it was. Lots of no's. No, you can't do this. You can't do that. You don't have this look. You don't look like that. You'll never make it. Okay, are you sure? Because I'm ready to prove you wrong. But in my eyes, I know I can make it. I don't have to listen to what you say. That's where that negativity comes in. If you remain positive and always think about the good aspects instead of the bad aspects, then things will turn out better. It may not happen right away. It may take a little bit of time. But it will still happen. If you sit and dwell on all the negative, everything negative will happen because that's what you're dwelling on. But for me, I just try to look at all of the positive things. And that's what I try to teach my kids when I teach them gymnastics or tumbling. Don't worry about all the bad things that can happen. Think about the good things that can happen. Think about you landing the skill and then moving on to a higher skill. Think about going showing your friends, hey, I could do this trick. I just learned this, like improving. And I look at that with myself. As I hit every set that I'm on, I watch the main actors. I look at the lead actors, the professionals, the A-listers, if you will. And I'm like, I can do what they do. I can eventually get to that spot. I am going to eventually get to that spot. I need to work a little more, but I will get there. I will be where they are one day. I just have to work at it a little more. And I have no problem with that. I'm perfectly fine with working to get where they are just so I can be that entertainer. I love it. You know, your your passion, your your drive, that just comes right through. I feel motivated just hearing that. That's very cool. Thank you for sharing that. No problem. Yeah. And to our Revenue Crew audience, you know, I've mentioned his website a few times, brianeneal.com. That's Neal, N-E-A-L. If you go to brianeneal.com, you got to check out Brian Tumbling. Now, that's that's an acrobat. That's a guy. But his twirls, whatever you call him, you may have a word. I'm not using the right words like, hey, we don't use twirl anymore. <laughs> whatever you call it. Everybody, you got to check him out tumbling, not just tumbling and doing acrobats, but in perfect synchronization with one of his students. Absolutely impressive. You got to check it out. Go to Brian E. Neal. Plus, you can also see not just videos, but some of his photo shoots, voiceover samples, modeling photos. You can see the whole thing. Very cool. Very sight. Very impressive. Just want to make sure that everyone gives a chance to check it out, you know. Not that you're necessarily going to hire him or not, but just to see some of the things that he can do. He's done this in four years, folks. So that's impressive. And that's what I like to showcase on our show. So that's very cool. And it looks like we're close to wrapping up, Brian. Is there anything else you'd like our audience to know about, please? Yes. Please stay motivated. Keep your heads up. If this is something you want to do, it's your passion, go for it. Don't let nobody tell you no. Even though you hear it, just ignore it. If you know this is what you're meant to do, this is what you're supposed to do, Go for it. Full, full go, full power. Put everything you can into the career or expertise, event, whatever it is. Put everything you got into it and it will happen. All right. Well, thank you very much, Brian. I love hearing that, you know, and I really hope our revenue crew audience takes that to heart because that is really what makes, I think, what drives someone and makes them or makes them not to be a little bit poetic. Well, thank you very much, Brian. It's an honor to have you on the show. I learned something from you. I learned more passion and enthusiasm, and I learned how to take a no and get them to second guess it. So thanks so much for sharing that with us. No problem. Thank you for having me, Tony. All right. That's Brian E. Neal, Making It in Entertainment. Once again, his website is Brian E. Neal, N-E-A-L, brianeneal.com. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, and stay tuned to our next show on Revenue Chat. Our next episode is 110 with Dr. Matthew Gonzalez. He thought he was born an entrepreneur from an early age, but quickly realized he needed to be made into an entrepreneur by asking questions and learning business through education, proper planning, and trial and error. 
He did that on an accelerated basis and went on to produce the popular End Head Daily Podcast. Dr. Matthew discusses accelerated project management resources for entrepreneurs on the next episode of Revenue Chat. All right. Thanks again, everyone. And until next time, remember, you can make life better for yourself and everyone. Choose wisely.